Okay, so we looked at programs, Hello World, uh, and sort of the very first thing we want to talk about are variables. So if you're brand new to programming, well, I'll try to explain what they are, but it may be a little confusing. Um, so in Go, the way we can create a variable is with the var keyword, V-A-R. So if, it, if people want to bring up that Hello World program from before, uh, we'll have some examples and you can type them in and get a feel for uh, how, to, how it works. So we type VAR and then a space and then the name of the variable. So I'm going to call it X. Uh, and then the third part is a type. So we've seen strings, so we'll use the keyword string for the type. And that creates a variable called X. Okay? And then with a the variable, we can use it inside of our function. Okay. So anybody can guess what this, this will print? Nothing. Nothing, right? That's what we would expect. Well, that depends or, 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 or a whole bunch of random stuff. This is a good question because different languages behave very differently with this uh, example. So we'll see what ours does. Okay. Not a blank line. Uh, the reason it's a blank line and not nothing is because we said print line, which always prints a line. If we had just said print, it really would print nothing. Okay. Uh, so basically, print line just adds a new line after whatever you get. Um, so that's an important point about Go. There is no sort of undefined behavior. If I don't initialize a variable, it, it just gets a value, and that value is well defined what it gets. Uh, for a string, that's the empty string. Um, in C, this would be bad. You wouldn't do this. Uh, <laughs> but in Go, you can. Okay, so that's the basic structure of the variable. You say var, the name, and then a type, and then you can optionally give it a value. So you can use the equals keyword of character, and then give it a string. So I can say hello world. Okay, and then we get our hello world, right? Um, so I assign the value hello world to x, and that's what it's going to start as. Uh, so we went French, we get x. So variables are just like they are, well, mostly like they are with algebra, same kind of idea. Uh, you know, it's a variable. And it can change, hence the name variable. So we can change the value of variable by using equals. Okay, so inside of my main function, I just set x equal to not hello world. So what's this program going to print? Not hello world. Exactly. Uh, because I changed the value, right? So if I do that instead, now we should expect it to print hello world, not hello world. I've changed the value of this, okay? So this is where it's different than algebra, right? In algebra, you don't really do this. Uh, when you assign a value to a variable, it's like a sign. Like if you were to read this like a theorem, it would be nonsense. Uh, but it's not. It's think of it like a placeholder or a box, and you're giving it a value, and putting it in the box, and then when you use it like this, you're pulling it back out. Again, okay? And that's how variables work. Um, so variables are super useful. They're like the core building block of a program, um, and so we're going to use them a lot. But in Go, there's a lot of ways to create variables. Okay? So we're, I'm going to show you some of the different ways we can do it. So this is like the basic structure, but we can do different things. One of the things we can do is we can get rid of the type. OK, so now I've said var x equal hello world. Um, this is exactly the same as the previous program. What it does is it looks at the right side of the equals, and it figures out what the type is, and it just gives it that type. So it knows that x is a string, because I assigned it a string. Now, Go is not like JavaScript or Python. Uh, it is strongly typed and statically typed. So I can't change the type of x. So to give you an example, another type that we often work with is an integer, which is just a number. This is invalid code, OK? The reason this is invalid is this is not a string. And I can only assign a string to x, OK? Everybody following? Yeah, question? Did you declare x as type when you Put a string above? Yeah, so it infers the type, right? 
like I said, this is the same. Uh, because it knows that the, it's the string on the right side, I don't have to tell it it's a string on the left side. Um, so we can leave out the type. The type is optional. It's often useful to have it, but we don't have to put it there. Yeah? So you define it as a string with the hello world line, thus the second definition of x doesn't work, correct? That's, That's right. why. That's why. That so if why. I did this, now you might think, okay, what if I did that, right? You can't do that because x has to have a type. So it can either get the type from what you assign it to, or you can specify the type. So this is valid. Okay? And any guess what this is going to print? So I've made a variable x that's an int, and I print it, and then I set it to 5, and then I print it again. Nothing and then 5. Okay, so let's, let's run that. Or perhaps whatever was there in the memory before. Okay, so uh, like I said, that would be right for C. That's exactly what would happen, I think, in C. But in Go, it always has a well-defined value. And if you don't give it a value and it's an integer, it's zero. So it prints zero and then five. Okay. Um, so that, this is equivalent to this. They call that the zero value because for an integer, it's zero. For a string, it's the empty string. And we'll see other examples of other types. Um, so that's how you can create a variable. There's another way to create variables. But first, I want to show you this. So I put it here at the at sort of the top level for this indention to the left here. Mm -hmm. uh, you can also define variables inside of the function, right? So I can move that to here. Um, that's basically the same thing that we just saw, like it's going to have the same behavior. Uh, but the other thing we can do with this is we can use a shorthand syntax, OK? So instead of saying var x int, we can say x colon equal, OK? And that is the same as var x equal 5. Okay, so it's a shorthand. It saves you a few characters. Um, those two things are the same. Okay? But you can only do this version inside of the function. You can't do it at the top level. Okay? So I can't do this. This is, this is bad. It'll not like this. If, uh, if you don't define x before you ask to print it, what happens? Okay, that's a good point. Let's, let's see mm -hmm. that. Uh, so let's... Now we've defined x after we used it. That's no good. It'll say undefined x, the compiler's going to complain. Um, undefined x. So, but it turns out that when you put it at the top level, all of that's sort of before anything you do in a function. So it doesn't matter where you define that. Uh, there's, no, there's no like before and after because it's at the top level. Uh, so at the top level, like this is code that gets run in order sequentially. Right? Statement, 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 statement. Um, but at the top level, it's more like declarative, right? Here's a function. Here I'm importing a package. Here's my package. Uh, these aren't exactly run in order. It's like defining things. And so uh, the top level is very different than, the, than a function. So when we define a variable at the top level, you can use it anywhere. Uh, it's basically how it works. Now, I'll, I'll talk more about scope in a second uh, in more detail. But Yeah, undefined x, because we didn't have it defined yet. Um, OK, so that's the shorthand, the x colon equal. Everybody got that? Uh, so it's very common in Go to see that. Uh, another thing is, once you define a variable, you can't redefine it. So this is, this is bad. Because uh, it says, no new variable on the left side of the colon equal. Okay. If I want to change the value of x, I have to use the regular equal. Right? Because colon equal is create a new variable and assign it the value. And equal is just assign it the value. Okay? And go is nice in that it doesn't let you create a new variable with the same name as the old one. Uh, there's some subtleties to that, but that's the basic idea. Because that's almost always a mistake. I didn't mean to do that. Uh, because there's no really good reason to do it. So I, I, don't, I would almost never want to do this. I probably want to give it a different name. And so the, the compiler is like catching a common bug for you by not allowing you to do it. Okay. The other thing about that is I can't do this. Okay. And I'll show you the other so you can see it. X declared and not used. 
So I can't create a variable that I don't use, okay? And that's a similar idea, because that's probably a mistake. Why would I create a variable and not use it? That's not efficient, I'm wasting resources, etc. You are allowed to create a variable at the top level and not use it, but not inside of the function, okay? Everybody following that? Now most of the stuff the compiler will just tell you, and it's pretty obvious, like if I get this error message, I'm pretty sure I know what I need to do, right? It tells me exactly what I need to do to fix it, um, which is I need to use it. So often you just see people do this, right? Now I used it, it's all cool. Um, okay. So those are our short variable dec declarations. Um, I, I don't think I'm gonna cover the blank ones right now because those are kind of confusing. Uh, the zero values, I talked about that, right? So the string, empty string, integer zero. Um, so let's get a little more detail into scope. So the way scope works is, there's a scope for this file, okay? So when I say, I have var x equal five, and then I print it, I can have other functions, and they can reference the variable as well. Because the scope of the variable, which is like the places you can use it, that's what the scope is, um, is for everything inside of this file. Now it turns out that at the top level here, it's not just this file, it's all the same, all the files in the same directory. Mm -hmm. So I can have another file in hello, you know, at f2.go. And I can use x. It's defined in the other file, but the scope goes to the whole directory, okay? When I define it at the top level. And the reason for that is that's super common. Uh, you don't usually have a variable called x equal five. You have a variable that's much more, you know, uh, you might say pi equal, you know, three or whatever. Uh, and then you'd want to use it in other functions inside of your code. Um, and so it, that's why they make it so that it's not just the file, okay? So you have scope that's at the package level. That means the whole directory. You have scope that's at the file level. The example of that is this import, okay? I used import format here, and that means I can use it inside of my functions. I cannot use it in here, right? This is invalid. I have to import it here as well, okay? Because for imports, they're only file level. That's the scope, is the file. But for variables at the top level, it's the whole package, okay? So you have package level, then you have file level, and then we have function, so inside of a function, I have a scope, right? And so when I, you know, move this variable inside of my function, and I can use it, right? So what's wrong with this code? Uh, there's no variable inside the function. Exactly, because the scope is only for the function. Okay, so the trick with scope is it's actually really easy to remember, um, is that it just goes to the curly braces, right? So just look for the curly braces, and that's where the scope goes to, okay? So you can nest the curly braces. I can make it like this. So it goes into curly braces, but not out. Yeah, it's like it goes up to the nearest curly brace, and then that's the scope. It's block level uh, lexical scope. That's what the, uh, so this is also invalid, because x is not defined. It's defined inside of this one, but not inside of the out. So that's the scope. The scope for inside the function is really straightforward. You just see if it's in there. And like I said, the compiler tells you, right? Uh, it makes it easy on you because it tells you when you have a problem. So you can define a variable inside the function? Undefined in the scope. Um, so your variables are always defined before the function, not inside the function? No, I did define a variable. Oh, right here. So basically the way the variable works when you find inside a function is it's from this point to the last closing yeah. brace. Okay. Uh, so I couldn't use it before here, and I can't use it outside of the brace. Right. So that's how the scope works. Okay. Um, so uh, the difference is in JavaScript. JavaScript lifts everything to the function. So this actually would be valid JavaScript. Super confusing, but that's what it does. Okay. So Go makes this decision much better. This makes sense. That Yeah. Um, because there are no uh, semicolons to close out your statements, is the return uh, being recognized by the compiler, or is it, or if you ran everything out as a single line, it would still read it properly? 
Yeah, great question. So it turns out if we were to look at the spec, um, if I have it open here. Okay. So it turns out that uh, the rules about semicolons, the formal grammar uses semicolons as terminators. Okay. And what that means is uh, when it like parses it, it really, it, like the way the grammar is written is it does expect semicolons. And the compiler simply inserts them. It has rules for inserting semicolons with new lines. Okay. So you basically never use them, but they're like there for the grammar. So you can put things on the same line, but if you do so, you have to use the semicolons. Okay. Now the thing is, since I'm using the editor here, when I save this, it's going to change it. Okay. And the reason it's doing that is it uses a special program called Go Format, which formats Go code. Uh, and it's like, that's bad. You're not supposed to do that. And so it changes. So it's like, it doesn't let you write the bad version. Um, that's actually a great feature of Go, is it enforces a style. Uh, you know, the endless debates about where you put curly braces and parentheses, parentheses and all that kind of stuff is just sort of, they made a decision and that's the way it is. And if you don't like it, sorry, but that's just the way Go code is. And which is great, uh, because it just ends that discussion. Nobody has to debate style anymore because there is one style. Um, so, and it's arbitrary, right? Like it doesn't actually matter. So just pick one and live with it. Um, so, yeah, when I on save, it's reformatting it. Uh, right, it's because I'm using uh, Atom, which has the plugin, which does the format. Um, oh, it's not. Uh, the Go Plus plugin. Some packages or? Yeah, I mean, I think it was part of the machine setup if you went through those steps. But, but anyway, I, it doesn't, I mean, it's just a cleaning up your code for you. Um, but, but anyway, to your point, yes, you, use, you do use semicolons between things on the same line. Um, Go is just inserting them based on new lines. Um, okay. 